Hi Booktube and welcome to a new video, the first of the new year. Happy New Year to you all. Uh, this is a Friday Reads, even though I've only uh, finished one book. Uh, I'm currently engaged in four others, two of which are Buddy Reads, but I'd also like to talk about the other upcoming books I'm looking to read in January because I've culled them from watching other booktubers top 10s of uh, 2021. So I thought that might be uh, reasonably interesting. Um, the book I finished is of Vladimir Sorokin, Russian author. This is called Day of the Oprichin oh, Oprichinik. Um, now I'd read Sorokin's The Blizzard, uh, didn't really like it. I described it as um, if Tolstoy wrote steampunk. Um, but this is much better. Uh, Oprichiniks were the old Tsar's uh, imperial bodyguard. And this is set in a near future Russia where Russia has very much uh, become uh, sort of uh, the sort of greater Russia that has always yearned for. It's, it's built a wall uh, to wall off all of Europe and it controls the gas supplies into Europe. Uh, and it's cooperating with the Chinese, looking to make the Chinese very much the junior partners. And it's ruled by an emperor, uh, a, a czar figure. And again, has this uh, this bodyguard of a progenitrix, of which the uh, the lead character is one such, and it is literally a day in his life, the day of the opportunity. Opera, uh, we this book is uh, a day in the life of, and all the stuff he does to best represent the uh, emperor's interests, uh, such as expunging um, political. Um, uh, opponents, um, greasing and making sure the uh, the Emperor is getting his cut of corrupt customs uh, deals uh, between uh, the Chinese and the Russians etc etc. Now that is a slight flaw in that because it's literally a day in the life of it becomes a series of events there's no real movement I mean it's very much an eye on to this world and it is a satire. It is a sort of, this is what has always been in Russia's psychological makeup. It's always yearned for an oriental despotism, a strong man at the top, which it has with Putin. It's not directly, I don't think, um, a, you know, sort of pastiching Putin. We never really sort of meet the, uh, the emperor. Uh, he sort of appears on video camera and, and stuff like that. Um, although we do meet his wife in, in one of the scenes. Um, but it's it's very much a sort of, you know, as I say, a, a sort of a satire on sort of the Russian mindset, really, and this will to power, this will for sort of nationalism and purity in Russian Orthodox uh, religion. Uh, and it's very well done, I think. I will say their trigger warnings are plenty. In a way, the, the gang of opportunities are a bit like the gang in uh, Anthony Burgess's A Clockwork Orange in their sort of attitude towards women. So it is, it is pretty, you know, hard to take. But within the, within the world of this book, it, it, it sort of makes sense. But women are treated absolutely abysmally in, in this. So I, I do issue that, tr that trigger warning. Um, so it was it was pretty good. As I say, there is a sort of a narrative flaw in that there's not much tension, there's not much movement. It is more a sort of a study, um, but it's not a study of an actual thing that you can look out your window and see. It's it's a, a, a sort of speculative or projection. It's a study of, of that. Um, so I really enjoyed it, and I gave it four stars. Now on to what I'm currently reading. So some buddy reads. So Seeing Red by Linda Merowan. This is a novel, although it seems to be quite autobiogra autobiographical. I'm buddy reading this with Zena over at Beating Around the Books. It's a short book. We will finish it by the end of this weekend. Uh, Linda Merowan wrote uh, one of the books that made it to my top ten last year, which is Nervous System, which is the book that came after this. Um, I'm not going to talk about any of these books that I'm currently involved in. The next is Asylum by Patrick McGrath, which is a buddy read with Jason at Old Blues uh, Chapter and Verse. Jason and I always traditionally see the year in, the new year in, with a buddy read. This is the book we've gone for uh, for this year, and that will run throughout January. So we're doing a quarter of the book a week. I did my first check-in yesterday. We're checking in on Thursdays. Jason's running slightly behind. He will do his today. 
Uh, I don't know if he'll do uh, talk about it in, in a video, uh, but that was why we chose for Thursday's check-ins, because it would leave us free if we wanted to talk about the book in our Friday reads. So those are two buddy reads. Um, I have started I Love Dick by Chris Cross. Uh, now, in case uh, you don't know the story behind this, I bought this book many years ago from Amazon. And usually, obviously, the poster arrives through the front door downstairs. I usually open them up, recycle the cardboard, and take the book upstairs into my to-be-read pile. For some reason that day, I didn't take I Love Dick up. Um, it just remained sort of on the lounge table, sort of, I think still, I've opened it, but it's sort of lying in its packaging. And it disappeared. Uh, it's gone. Um, I assumed that someone just sort of saw the packaging and threw it out and I didn't notice and I forgot that the book was there. Or someone took an executive decision and purged it because of the title. I don't really think that happened, but, you know, I can't rule it out. Anyway, so I mentioned this story in one of the tag videos I did last year. And Sean, the book maniac, very kindly said he would send me through the snail mail from Japan his copy of the book. Um, and it arrived just before Christmas and I started it. Uh, so the first thing to say is thank you very much, Sean. The second thing to say is I'm loving it. Um, and yeah, I think that's all there is to say about it really. So it was a slightly strange way I came to read this several years after I'd intended to. And Sean, uh, Sean bailed me out on it. I don't know what Sean thought of this book. I haven't looked up on his Goodreads, uh, whether it was a bail or he got through to the end. Um, I'm guessing he didn't like it. Um, that's probably, you know, that's why he was happy to, to send it on to me. But, you know, I could be horribly wrong. When I've finished it, I will go and read Sean's review, because I'm intrigued to know what he made of it. And E.M. Uh, Chioran, The Trouble With Being Born, which is, uh, like all of Chioran's books, uh, a set of aphorisms. Uh, Chioran was very much uh, a nihilist, and I had vaguely heard of his name without knowing anything about him, but I read just before Christmas uh, Rob Doyle's novel Thresholds, which he talks about Chioran, and I thought, oh yeah, that sounds interesting. Um, so I started reading this last night. It's divided into 12 sections, chapters, uh, but they are just all aphorisms and I realise that the way to read this is slowly over the course of January is to do a section, well, each one of the 12 sections at a time but slowly so I will be reading this through the course of the month now on to, oh no, so another buddy read is uh, Jean-Louis Borges' Fictions which is a buddy read again with Zena over at Beating Around the Books. We're going to do two this month. So as soon as we finished uh, Lena Meadow Anne, we'll be moving on to this. I read this many years ago and can't remember a blessed thing about it. So I'm not even counting it as a reread for me, although I suppose technically it is. Uh, Zena had read uh, another Borges book last year and was very keen to move on to this. I said, oh, I have that. Uh, and I can't remember anything about it when we were talking about it together on Boxer. So uh, we're going to buddy read it. Again, quite a short book, so um, I, we haven't set the parameters for how long we're going to take over it, but I'd imagine a week or so. And on to um, books which I may or may not, may or may not get to in January. Um, Sarah Gilmartin's The Dinner Party, A Tragedy. Um, I saw this in Bob the Booker's top ten reads of the year. And normally any book which is basically a dinner party conversation, no matter what that conversation is, is a complete anathema for me. I'm not interested in it. It's a bit like watching films that are all courtroom dramas, because there's nothing you can do with the visuals in, in the film. And I don't feel there's much you can do other than the characters emote and enunciate and, and all of that stuff. But the way Bob talked about it, I'm not sure that it's it's radical in form, but he did make it sound very appealing to me. So I'm more than happy to give this a go. Um, the next two are on their way in the mail. I don't have them yet. So the first one is Tana French uh, in the Woods, which was, uh, I think, in... Uh, I know it's Fra uh, Fraser's um, A Springboard for Thought. It was in, in one of his videos. I think it was in his top ten video. Uh, I could be wrong. Actually, no, I think maybe it's just in a December wrap-up. But he'd read about three or four Tana French books in, 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 in December. 
and on the face of it she's just a, a detective thriller genre writer which normally I wouldn't be that interested in but he talked about this one first and made it sound really interesting that it, it was a lot more than just a genre work um, so I was intrigued to read that uh, but I don't have it yet and the next one uh, was from Matthew Sharapa's top 10 reads of the year it's Oh Beautiful by Yung Huang, a, a Korean-American, uh, where a female journalist is sent back to cover a story of the pipelines in Dakota, uh, which is where she was from originally, and she sees that the town has changed radically uh, since she was growing up there because of the pipeline. And ostensibly, uh, it's a book about the sexism and the sort of toxic atmosphere of the place has changed, I assume through all these sort of, you know, very rugged working class uh, pipe, pipe, pipe men, or pipe builders, whatever they're called. And it's a study, from what I understand, from what Matthew was saying, of this, of the, and it just sounded absolutely fascinating to me. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that gets here soon. And then finally, uh, yet another potential buddy read, although I think this is scheduled for February rather than January. This is Stanis Sasa Stanisic's new novel, uh, Where You Come From. Uh, Stasa Stanisic's debut novel was How the Soldier Fixes the Gramophone. Uh, Stanisic was a uh, Yugoslav refugee. I think he's Serbian in a Croatian-dominated region, and uh, he fled from Yugoslavia as a child and went uh, to Germany and all his books are written in German and I really liked um, How the Soldier Repairs the Gramophone uh, but there seemed to be nothing forthcoming from him since and I, what I didn't realise is I'd missed the fact that this was published last year and in between was a book I'd missed as well which I also have but I'm keen to get to this one. Uh, Zina has read this in German uh, the original German, and we're doing a buddy read of it. I think she's going to read it in English this time round. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So there you have it. That's my first Friday reads of 2022. Uh, Till next time. Thanks very much.